Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi, and in this video, we're going to talk about generative AI. What exactly is generative AI, generative artificial intelligence, um, and what does this mean for designers? So before talking about generative AI, we will talk about where this whole term called generative started, and we'll talk about generative art. So what exactly is generative art? Or you will instruct the computer a certain rules and when a user tries to operate that program the output will be created based on the preset rules so something very simple it might actually seem a little complicated i'll tell you something um, that is easier for you to understand think about um, simulators simulators in your 3d applications like cinema 4d or blender or maya or anywhere and think about a simulator application inside that so let me show you a quick example here so in cinema, we are in Cinema 4D right now. And this is a modeling tool. It's not primarily a simulation tool. It's a modeling and animation tool. But let's imagine that I'm creating a box right here. And I'm creating a sphere also. Scale it down. Let's push it up. So I've created a scene right now. But instead of manually animating it, I'm going to instruct the computer certain rules, right? Here, in most of the simulators, it works on the rules of physics. So I'm going to just tell that rule that this particular object, the sphere right here, I'm going to say that this is a rigid body. A rigid body means that it's an object with a particular mass. And if there is an object with mass standing in the air like this, what will happen? So based on the rule, it will fall down like this because there is gravity. So it already worked, but we can actually add one more parameter, one more rule, right? Okay, this is an object with a mass, but this is also an object with a mass, but it is a static collider object. So it's like a floor. So I'm gonna just take the cube here. I'm gonna say that this is a collider. So when the object the sphere with the mass is falling down it will hit this floor so now if you play it you can see that it just reacted like that i didn't animate the scene i didn't manually keyframe anything here i just simulated something this is a form of generative art we are setting we are telling the rules to the computer and the computer will actually play by those rules and give you an output generate an output this is called generative art we can actually do a lot more things here. So if I say that okay, this particular surface or maybe this sphere right here, and uh, this is more bouncier than uh, what you are, what it's doing right now. So I want it to be, um, let's say, uh, to have more bounce value. So now if I set that and if I enter it, you can see that it's, it's just bounced away like that, right? It's, it's a very bouncy object. So I, that's too much of bounce, I don't want that. Let's bring it down a bit, so you can set it like that. And it's physically accurate, it's based on the rules of physics. So all these parameters are preset, right? So anybody who comes in into this and set this up will get the same result. This is generative art. Now this is not, this is to, uh, I just showed you this 3D simulator to tell you an example of what is generative art, but this is, this goes way beyond that, right? So if you think about generative, uh, programs so how would people actually create this right so it is done using programming uh, hardcore programming so let's take a look at that before I talk about the program I'll show you one more example of this silk or weavesilk.com is an interactive generative art tool so you can come to this site and start drawing anything and create this beautiful um, Aurora patterns uh, for you. So the programming that is actually given here is that you track the mouse movement of this user, but instead of giving a plain brush stroke or something like that, create these sort of layered um, shapes. So I can click new here. I have some options here. So I can change the color or I can even blend two colors together. So if I want to do something like a fire, I can create that. 
and uh, I can draw it like this and it creates a beautiful shape like this. I can also make symmetrical shapes if I mirror it across the center and now I have, I can create symmetrical, uh, really illustrative, you know, shapes with this. So this is an example of it. I'll show you one more example of this. This is a generative art typography tool. And you can see that um, when you click on this, it's creating a typography animation right here. So you have some options here. These are all preset. So if you come in here, you can increase the quality of explosion. You can increase the strength of the explosion. You can even change the ratio of how it affects all the things in here. So you can change the text to whatever you want. and it reacts to it. it. It can be used for some really fun stuff. You have an option to create any of those stuff here. So if I click on Coil, it actually gives me a typography arrangement where I can change this to anything that I want. And it creates an animation already for you. You will still have these options. So you can change it into um, a style that you want. You can change the colors which are used in here. So this is again an example of generative art. Now let's talk about how all these, how people are actually doing these. Um, there is a tool which is very popular and it's called processing. So processing is basically, um, you know, a, a programming language, which is basically based on JavaScript. So you can go here and it's open source, you can download this and uh, you will get the platform where you can write codes uh, to create these set of programs. And this comes with, you know, a lot of libraries and references. So you would know uh, what exactly to use to activate a particular behavior. So it's, it's free to use. You can, if you are into programming, you can start creating your own generative art where you set the constraints and people are starting to use it. That's one interesting way to do this. Uh, now this is technically a little bit, you know, it requires programming knowledge, but you have certain open processing libraries. So openprocessing.org, if you go in here, you will see open source or free to use programming, uh, visual programming that is done right here. You can go to discover and look at programs uh, which are using these sort of constraints and let you create or modify this to create an effect that you basically want. So randomly, if you just take an example like this, you can see that um, this is a generative art, somebody programmed in there. You can click on these to see the processing code, uh, which is written to create this particular animation that you're seeing. So which means that you can actually go in here and you can change anything that you want um, in here and that will reflect on this outcome. Uh, let me show you uh, an example here. So let's go to uh, the home page. Let's go to discover. You can search also. I'll search something. This is a pretty interesting, uh, it, it's, a, it's a poster designer. Uh, so you can basically see that uh, it already creates a poster and this entire poster that you actually see here, which is very Y2K stylish poster, uh, is created by a program and you can see the code right here. Uh, but the good thing that the programmer did is that they actually in the program itself and while the program is running, they give you some visual parameters here that you can change and you can make your own posters. So for instance, if I just change the seed number here, you can see that the visuals are changing. So like this, you can change every single parameter of this. You have a set of presets which are available here. There are different uh, 
poster pr presets which are available here. You can go and you can start changing everything from the uh, typeface to all those things are able to, you are able to change this. You can change the colors which are actually available here. So it creates a pretty interesting, you can change the uh, layout. You can change it to a vertical or a horizontal poster. An interesting poster designer, which is done using generator. Here again, these are the rules. We will not be able to go beyond the rules. The rules are already set, but we can actually create something using it. This is generative art. Show, let me show you one more example. Um, let's go to, so what this program basically does is, if you feed any image into this program, the program actually tries to recreate it using um, lines or curves. So you can see that it's, it's generating an image right here. And that's a preset image. So if you go to the, um, the code right here, and you can change the image to any image that you want, Let's talk about what is generative AI and what is different here. So generative art is not a learning model. It cannot self-learn. It actually works on the parameter set by its programmer. It will, we are able to produce alterations of it, but it is still, you know, it still abides to the rules that are set and it is not going to improve there. Uh, but what generative AI does is that AI or artificial intelligence is a learning model. So it will keep observing, it will keep learning from the uh, database that it has from the internet, and it will use that information to generate artwork for you. So that is generative AI. It doesn't have to be just artwork. It can be uh, text-to-speech, it can be uh, an image, it can be a letter. It can be a uh, literature, whatever you want. It is basically using that learning model. So it is constantly improving and it generates something for them. So a programmer is not setting these rules. The AI itself is learning and it is using that knowledge to set or create uh, new stuff for you. So let's take a look at a couple of things like that, right? So let's go to, um, you might have already heard Open AI Mid Journey, right? So if you go to, um, you can uh, see that what is AI doing here? Uh, it's, it's a visual creator. So the journey uh, is a visual AI uh, tool. So what it does is that based on our text prompts, which you can see right here, it learns or it actually looks at all the learning or the knowledge that they have about these prompts. It runs or you know it, it just goes through tons of images, it goes through tons of videos, um, you know profiles and all that and they're gonna take all that information and puts it together, stitches all that information together to create results like this. So this is what happens in generative AI and it changes. So in the next time or tomorrow, if I'm going here and I'm giving the same command, it is going to give me a different result, a different phase. So that's the power of generative artificial intelligence, AI. So, Let's try, give it a try here and see what happens. So we're going to go to Adobe Firefly. We'll try the text to image effect. And we can enter the prompt that we want. So it's basically taking the text and converting it into um, an image based on its knowledge base from the internet. So let's try and do um, an architecture, let's see from the designer's point of view, how this is going to work. Inspired poster that uses
Now, I'm not actually trying to create uh, an image. I'm trying to find that will the generative AI give me poster inspirations. That is one brilliant way that we can actually use uh, AI as designers because rather than going through the already existing designs as our mood board or inspirations, we can create something using AI and use it as our inspiration starting point. So let's click create and then see how um, AI works with a design request. The results are really impressive. So rather than creating just an image, it actually gave you give it gave us a beautiful architecture inspired poster that uses reds and white in Bohas and Art Deco style. That's the main commands that they used, and the aspect ratio is square. So we don't want that. We can actually set it to portrait. We can go down here and you can say that what kind of stuff that you want. They chose art, which is actually good because we are looking for an illustrative type of uh, design. We can change the visual intensity. So I can increase the visual intensity of this. You can even upload a reference image here. And once you've done all of that, and you can click generate once again. So it adds all these recommendations in there. Yes, so now it is going to create designs that are vertical, that are more visually intense, and we have a pretty interesting starting point. So if I just click on this image, it's a really interesting image, which uses the inputs that I've given, and I can use this as a starting point to build my design, right? So that's how you can use AI as a designer in one way. Uh, now, <clears throat> when you're talking about uh, the other, tools, for instance, let's say um, ChatGPT. So ChatGPT um, usually uh, is something which is a text uh, generative, generative text, no, not generative art, but it is not going to create an art piece or a visual imagery right now. But when we are looking at this, as designers, you can use a lot of this for learning and also for um, creating certain briefs and stuff like that. So the way that I use it for learning is very simple. So if I, I learn about somebody, if I want to learn quickly about somebody, and I don't want to go through tons of literature to actually understand the basic information about that person, I don't have to do it. Um, I can just say that, summarize the life and achievements in two or three paragraphs include his famous books and associations write in simple language That's it. So I know every, so we might be encountering a lot of names of designers or writers or people like that. And usually what we do is we go to Wikipedia, we read a lot of stuff, we then go to different articles, we look at what the works uh, are that that we made and all those things. But here it's nothing. You just summarize the entire um, you know point of what Stephen Heller is. In, in a few words. So this is the first information that I actually need. It summarized it for me. Usually what I did was I used to spend a lot of time to summarize this information by myself, but it is right now giving it to me. Then I can now go back and if I want to know more about it, I can go and choose what I want to read next from him. So that gives me more control um, with this. And there are other things that also I can do in here, which is more directed, right? Um, my user flow for a food ordering app that delivers fully um, live stock. So it, it gave me 
a rough skeleton so whenever you are stuck with some sort of block a creative block or maybe you know you don't know how to logically approach a scenario you can actually use this and you can get pretty good results with uh, chat gpt uh, there are so many other stuff that is available in your design tools itself for instance if you go to figma and when you're inside figma you have a lot of um, you know, uh, uh, plugins which are available that actually um, helps you design cute layouts when you're not so, you know, it, you don't want to spend so much time just fixing all the, you know, setting up the initial layout of things. You just want to make a rough draft of how things will fit into a screen and all that. And you don't want to put so much effort into it. You can use a plugin just like that. So um, say I have a frame here. And I'm going to say that if you go to plugins and uh, wireframe designer, and click on that. And I can just mention here, right here, saying that what is that I want to design. So uh, an OTT platform uh, home screen, which shows uh, selected film thumbnails and a short description about the film. This is what I want to make. And if I click on design, it's thinking and it's looking at a lot of references and it designed. And while I was talking about it, it already designed the whole thing for me. So if you look at the wireframe right now, you can see that they created a home page so it starts with movies and then what kind of genre is it it even filled it with real film names with the duration of its run uh, reviews and everything it, it actually gave you everything here now it's all about your visual design thing you can actually plan about how to actually make it more live and things like so it, it is always something which is helpful uh, with the AI to make your workflow easier right so AI cannot actually do anything without you. You are going to be there and it makes your work so much faster. Let me show you another interesting uh, progression of AI. What happens in here is that I'm going to write a basic text prompt, a city scape. So immediately, as I'm typing it, it is generating that. Uh, Japan, it changed to Japan. And we see a huge sun in the background. You can see that it's happening as I'm typing, it's real time. Now that's not the end of it. So what happens here is that you can change the uh, the type of rendering that happens in here. Now the, the beauty of this is that you can actually manipulate this render by adding shapes into this. So if I'm gonna take um, a shape and I'm gonna add something like a circle, into this scenario. I'm gonna draw a circle right here, my design right now. And as I'm moving it, that is controlling the scene. This shape is actually controlling the, it's not even the text prompt anymore. So I can add um, one more shape in here. So I'm gonna just create a couple of more shapes. So this is real time generative AI. Now let's take a look at uh, a very recent, um, you know, two launches. One is Sora. So Open AIs is releasing uh, an AI called Sora. So what it basically does is that uh, it will create a text to video, a high quality text to video model, where you don't need, you know, uh, to go through complex animation tools and all that to create something. But if you prompt it, it will create that scene for you, including the camera motion, uh, including animation and everything. So it is still not open to public, but there has been certain videos that they have released, which is stunning. Uh, the capability of those tools are something that we were not able, able to even think of or, you know, imagine in the last year, but it, it's creating Hollywood level visual effect sequences from a text prompt. So that's where it is hitting. So that's Zora. And there is another design tool called create e.ai. Um, 
where basically it is a platform like Figma and based on your commands, based on your text inputs, it is going to create everything for you. Um, so I would recommend uh, these tools for you. But to sum up the whole conversation, so we started talking about generative AI, how we actually reached here in generative AI. All of this is something that will become a part of our workflow. This is not going to replace anything that we are already doing. Uh, it will become a part of our workflow. Our workflow needs to change. The qualifications will change. Uh, we need to be more, um, you know, aware about the vision. We need to be more creative. We need to be more unique in our vision. So those are the qualifications that a multimedia professional might need in the future. So um, get started with this. Get some exposure on this, and it's definitely going to help you big time um, in the future. Thank you. Hope this makes sense. And I'll see you soon.